maple collector here. So I gotta get um, my spring tour done here. Um, it'll probably be three parts, but um, it's gonna be summer here pretty soon. My trees don't really have their spring color anymore, but they still look nice, so. Here is the first one for today, um, Kauai. Acer sure saw one of them, Kauai. It's a hybrid between a between a um, either palmatum or prob probably more likely a Acer amoenum subspecies Matsumare um, and Shirasawanum. Um, it's called a Shirasawanum though because it has the seeds seed pods that point up. Um, really nice dissectum. It's uh, Grows a little different, a little more rigid than some of the other dissectums. Doesn't weep quite as much. Um, it has a really nice color. Um, all from the beginning, from beginning to end, it has great color. And the leaves are more shiny than uh, some of the other dissectums, most of the uh, palmatums. Or they're called palmatums, but they're actually Acer amoenum subspecies Matsumare. Um that is the true species for most dissectums, not all, but most. Um, but we'll just stick with palmatum because that's what everybody calls them. Anyway, um, so I'll get a little bit closer here. I try to move my camera a little less than I did la the last video. I realized the last video that I was moving around way too much. Um, so there's some really pretty new growth on Kauai. I think this one has a few seeds on it too. Here we go. There's a few seeds on it. Samaras. Oh, right there. Let's see what that turns into. If it uh, if it actually grows. Okay, this one next to it is a uh, Goshiki. Goshiki Kotohime. Um, really cool tree. Kind of in the uh, Shishigashira group, I would call it. Um, I've had this one a couple years now. I got a, I got a decent size when I bought it, so. Really pretty cool tree. It's another one of those that has the real uh, Japanese garden look to it to me it just uh, stands out it's real uh, sculptural Goshiki Kotohime that is an Acer palmatum here next to it starting to get pretty big now that is Acer Japonicum um, fairy lights. They say this one grows slow, and I guess it does for a Japonicum, but I think I've had this one for, I wanna say four years now, maybe five. And it's pretty good size. I got it as a one gallon. So it's not that slow of a grower beautiful in the fall and has a, a unique structure. This is a dissected uh, leaf japonicum. I don't have a lot of japonicums. I have a few, but um, really like this one. Fairy lights. Uh, back here, starting, I need to stake it. It's starting to fall over. That one is a Japanese maple called Acer carpinifolium, and that's the cultivar Esveld Select. Uh, a lot of pictures I've seen of it are a lot bushier than this one. Um, this one's really growing straight up, but I, I like that. I want, but I got. I'm gonna have to stake it, or else it's gonna keep this uh, kind of weeping form up top. That this just happened. It it got too heavy, and I guess. It must have sprung up another foot or so this year and uh, started falling over. 
but I'll fix that. Behind that, doesn't have its all of its color anymore, but that is a uh, Acer Palmatum um, cotton candy. One thing about this one, it's an it's an Arita no Nishiki type. Um, it has more pink in it than Arita no Nishiki. Arita no Nishiki has a lot of pink too, but this is like a, a darker, deeper pink when it first comes out in the spring. It's mostly turned white now, but it's pretty heavily variegated. At least the one I have that I never, I didn't trim the tips off last year. Um, I, some of the tips of it died in the summer. It got a little too hot where I had it. I've moved it now, so it should be okay where it's at now. Uh, part sun. This one gets sun a little bit in the middle of the day, but uh, not too much. Right here, this green one is a popular one, the most most popular green one probably, either this one or Waterfall. Um, this is Viridis, or Viridis, Acer Palmatum Viridis. So, I've had that one for quite a while. My wife gave this to me, um, I think before we were married, as a gift. I don't remember if it was a birthday gift or uh, what it was, it probably really was a birthday gift. But uh, it's, a, it's an oldie but goodie. Very beautiful tree. There it is. Right down here we have an Acer Pictum. I think the first Acer Pictum I have shown, at least in my display garden. Um, this is uh, Hoshi Yadori. Really pretty. It's starting to turn, get some white. It turns a little more white where it gets more sun. In the shade, it stays more yellow um, with the green and yellow variegation, green and white, where it's a little bleached out. So, beautiful cultivar, Hoshi Adori. Back here, in the dark, that is an Acer, um, Acer Amoenum, subspecies Massive More. That one's called a Moriyama. Usually found as, almost always found as Acer Palmatum a Moriyama. That's an older one. But it is, Acer Palmatum has been separated into two species now, Acer Amoenum and Acer Palmatum. Um, Acer Amoenum has three subspecies. It has subspecies Amoenum, subspecies Matsumurai, and I don't remember the other one. There's another one, and I'm not, and I don't know a lot about the other one, so I, I need to do more research on it. I don't think there's a lot of information on it. But uh, anyway, this one back here is bright pink. I'm sure people have seen um, pictures of it in the, in the spring when it first comes out. Um, this is Acer uh, Pseudoplatinus Brilliantissimum. It turns kind of a uh, white and green variegated once the pink's gone. Still a pretty tree. Uh, this one was getting really tall and I actually cut a couple of the leaders off uh, to make it a little shorter. I like it better when it's shorter so I can see the tops of the leaves. It's not like Esk Sunset. Um, all I, that uh, has uh, the purple bottoms so it looks even kind of a pink color from underneath. This one actually looks much nicer from the top than, than from the bottom up. So, or if, if you have a really large one, it looks nice from a distance because that bright pink is really bright. Like It's like a salmon color, even brighter than a salmon color um, when it first comes out. This crazy, hostile looking one is Acer Rufa Nerve Sunshine. Beautiful tree. This one, I, as this one shoots up leaders every year too. I cut this one back just because I don't really have a space for a full size Rufa Nerve. And I like keeping this one short so I can see the tops of the leaves as well. I mean, look at those leaves. They're crazy. That color is real. I mean, 
there's nothing that I did to this video to make that look brighter or anything. That's that's really the color it is. Ace of Rufinerve, Sunshine. Right down here, we have a little small leaf truncatum uh, called a Baby Dragon. It's got some nice colors when it first comes out in the um, spring. Um, but it's more of a, it's just mainly green. It's got nice shaped leaves though. It's got those truncatum leaves on it, which are different than other, uh, other Japanese maples. This is actually a Chinese maple. Ace or truncatum baby dragon. Okay, this one here is kind of similar to Goshiki Kodahime. This is a a, a, um, a ceiling from uh, Shishigashira, and this one's called Jade Dragon. Acer Paul made him Jade Dragon. I actually have seeds on this one this year, Samaras. They're very, very tiny. See those little tiny pink things? Those are Samaras. So I don't know if they're fertile or not, but if they are, that could produce something neat. Jade Dragon. So this one is a branch up here too. I don't know if any of the Samaras survived. Maybe a couple up top. It grew a couple inches this year. Uh, it's a very slow growing tree. And this one here is Acerpictum usagumo. So it, it comes out kind of a pink color in the spring. But then it, it remains basically this color for the entire summer into fall where it turns kind of yellow and orange. Um, the lighter color leaves, like this, um, are the ones that get a little bit more sun. Um, the ones that are that are, have the more more contrast on the leaves, kind of stripes, those are in more shaded areas, like a bright shaded area. If they get if they're in a like a deep shade, they won't uh, have much white. That that'll get completely kind of a washed out darker green. <clears throat> So, Ace Pictum, Usagumo. This taller one right here, this kind of bright green one, that is Shadava Gold. That's a sport off of, uh, oh, I can't think of the name, Aoyagi, Aoyagi. I think it's how it's pronounced. I'm not sure exactly, but Aoyagi. That one's only, I mean, I've had it probably seven years or so, and it's pretty tall for a dwarf. It's supposed to be more of a dwarf. Um, I received it as a whip, and it, and I never, I never pruned it to, to have multiple leaders on it. It eventually got leaders, but they, but it grew up pretty tall before it started getting, before the leaders started splitting. So, uh, it's a decent sized tree, but it has slowed down now. Now it doesn't seem to be growing up so much as it's actually starting to grow out. Uh, the tree is probably, I'd say eight, nine feet tall. Ace of Palmatum Shadava Gold. Really nice tree though. I mean, it's a real nice fresh green color and uh, beautiful yellow in the fall. Um, highly recommend this one. It's, a, it's great to put, you know, so many Japanese maples have uh, all the, have color, a lot of reds and pinks and yellows and things like that. Um, this nice light green color is just a, it's a nice addition. And the uh, bark stays pretty green too. Um, especially on the new growth bark, it's like a, pea green color so
All right, kind of back here behind Usagumo. Here we have Abigail Rose. This is a Hagasiyama type. It's, um, this one's pretty tall. It's, I just got this one this year, actually. Fairly decent sized one. I, I had a small one years ago and I lost that one. So I decided, it, since it's such a slow grower, small tree, um, I wanted to get a bigger one. But I always liked it. This one's been pushed a little bit because you can see like the spaces between the clusters of leaves, the internodes. Um, a little bit too much nitrogen causes that. So I, I'll have to work on this one for a couple of years to get it a little bit more dense looking because I like the dense look on the leaves. But it shouldn't take me too long. I might have to prune out some of the top branches to uh, to get it to look the way I want. And I won't I won't be adding any nitrogen fertilizer for a couple of years, um, just so it gets more uh, dense looking. So, Acer Paul made them. Abigail Rose. And even back behind that, I have Acer Circinatum Monroe. This is a nice tree. This is the first year I actually have some uh, flowers on it and some, uh, should get some Samaras on it. So I'm looking forward to that. Because I've, I've had Circinatums for years now, but this is actually the first time I've had one uh, produce flowers um, and Samaras. So, hopefully we get some cool hybrid out of that one. Ah, there's the, there's the flowers. I can't really get it back there without crushing my trees. But there's the flowers. Acer circinatums come out late. I mean, this one is really only, it's not even fully out, but it really only started coming out a couple weeks ago. They're one of the last, sometimes they are the last to, to actually come out in the garden. Okay, here this bushy little guy, this is Mayday. Ace of Paul Bantam Mayday, obviously way past its um, spring flesh colors kind of apricot and then yellow now it's more of a just a light light green color kind of similar to the Shadava Gold's color I've had this one for a while now probably five six years six years I would say and uh, it's nice and dense it's a real pretty real pretty structure on this one it's a slow grower I mean you can push anything to grow faster but I prefer most of the time for them to grow a little slower because uh, it just they have a nicer look to them than if you if you push them. They're they're bushier and denser. I mean, it depends on the cultivar too. Some of them it doesn't look that bad if you push them a little bit. You never want to push them too much because it it tends to make them more susceptible to uh, diseases. So, Acer Paul made them Mayday. I think that's probably it. Well, I'll go a little bit farther, but not much. Um, here we go. My Acer Paul made them Goshiki Shidari. This is one that you have to prune reversions out on, but um, I had it many years now. And uh, I think I've done a pretty decent job at pruning out the reversions because it's a beautiful tree. I love this one. Very similar to uh, Toyama Nishiki, or to Toyama Nishiki. This is Goshiki Shidari. The rarer of the two. I have one that doesn't really have a spot yet. 
just kind of out in the middle of my patio, still in the uh, fabric container. This is um, Aka Mote. This is Acer Japonica. Look at those big leaves. Really cool. This one holds its color fairly nice for a uh, Japonica. We've got some Samaras on there. This one, maybe it's a, uh, I don't know if it's hybridized or what, but it, uh, it holds its, its uh, I guess some of the uh, Japonica, other Japonicums hold their seeds up too. This one has different looking seeds, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is some type of hybrid. Aces Japonicum Aka Amote. This one right here, I've staked up all these bags of jaspers and other types of rocks. Me and my son like to rock hound, so there's some, I need to, I'm going to, I use the rocks in the garden, but I haven't uh, been able to lay them out yet. Uh, this is right here is um, Looking Glass Falls. This is an introduction by Mr. Maple. Um, it's a Ryusei type. Um, it's marketed as a, because it has these purple tips on it, kind of like sumagaki when it first leaves out. But it's very fleeting. It doesn't last long at all. Um, what I like about this one is I like the uh, uniformity of the leaves compared to Ryusei. Um, and it's less, it doesn't weep quite as much. So the branches, they kind of come out and then weep instead of going straight down like a Ryusei. Um, so it is a different look, different structure. It's a really pretty elegant tree to me. Um, and I don't, I, I don't like it for the reason it's, uh, <laughs> it's marketed for. It's, to me, it's just a, a beautiful tree uh, structurally. Here we have my Michael Steinhardt. Uh, this is Acer Bergeranum. And uh, this one's been chopped up many times. I prune it <laughs> into all different shapes. I have to keep it small because this would be a, a massive tree if, uh, if I let it. So uh, I, was, I was training it kind of columnar for a while, um, but a branch from a prune tree fell on it and broke the the leader off of it so I just kind of I just kind of cut it up this is how it's growing now I like it though looks nice um, it's got a few burnt leaves on it um, because I don't really have the perfect spot for it it's getting a little bit too much Sun but it it does fairly well in the Sun it, w it will the some of the uh, young leaves from the spring will uh, burn up and fall off but it produces new leaves right after that and those seem to do fine the new leaves that come out in the summer they don't usually burn so um, Asa Bergeranum Michael Steinhardt and with that I think I'll stop for now and I will pick up on another episode um, should be pretty soon because like I said, it's getting later and later, and the trees are getting less color. They still look good, but they don't have that really that pop of the spring, early spring color. So until next time.